What's up guys, good and welcome back to Pro Samurai 2022 for episode number 67 of the Calendar Garmin Karema, the final episode of the Tour de France. For those who've missed the first two episodes of the tour, I would highly recommend to go ahead and check them out. But if you've done so, uh, then let's not wait any further and let's start the final six stages of what has been so far quite a remarkable race. And we begin the time trial as always with Johan Price Peterson in P1 in San Nicolo a Trevia. Although, although Verenchal has had a good, good time trial, and that's P1 actually. Fazor and Verenchal gets in. And don't like last time, Stefan has a good day. Right. We may be looking at a win for once here, which I haven't had many of them in this uh, in this race. Oh, I think only four, maybe five. Yeah, I think five stages so far. So we have five stages in, in 15. Uh, that, that's all right. Pipo Gana has taken P1 in San Nicolo Trevia on his home turf. We'll cross the line with Stefan. I'm pretty sure that's P1 for me. 23 seconds clear. I think we are good. I think the only one that could threaten me potentially would be Tale Pogacar now. Or maybe Wout van Aert, but then again, Wout hasn't been in the greatest of shape, even though he's sitting in P11 in the GC. I'm being quite worried here. Mr. Van Aert has had good time all around. One second slower. <laughs> okay. West today. I think, I think we're clear. I think we're going to win by one second today. Final kilometer for the yellow jersey. And it is going to be position number three for Tadej Pogacar. He came back, he gained 10 seconds in the final intermediate. But Stefan Kung gets a second win of the Hannibal race. We are good. We didn't even wait for the start of, uh, of stage 17 to get some breakaways. Um, Verenchal is wearing green, which I'm going to presume is because he got points in the town hall yesterday. Uh, but yeah, all of those riders attacking, the likes of Conrad, the likes of Kelderman, the likes of Yates, uh, I don't like it, so I'm going to pace with most of my riders here, and then attack with Balmer, uh, Hugo Hull, Vermarke, Kung, Nordhagen, uh, Suter, everyone, to try and, uh, and get some points. There's been a crash in the breakaway. Paules, Van der Poel, Carthy, Kellerman, and uh, Higuita. That doesn't really do me any good, uh, because it still means that Yates is in the front group, so is Haaland Johansson, and he's actually the one making moves and making strides in this stage. Balmer really trying to hold on to, to, to what he's got here. Uh, actually, I'll protect. Yeah, I'll do like that. We're going to try and, uh, and come back on Johansson, Rubio, and Bardet. Crushed by Martin Dean and the Peloton, that's fine by me. Okay. With Conrad and Kelderman out of the picture for the next KOM, I feel like I may need to push for this one. Because so far, I've just been defending, and I've never been on the offense when it comes to KOMs. My tactics may have to change in the uh, Madonna di Pietra Volta. We're at the key moment of the stage, uh, because we're nearing the summit of the next land, the uh, Paso di Santo Croce. But mostly, I've made a mistake, yeah, that was fine. Uh, mostly, Mr. Yates has exploded. So as Vermarke, meaning that Balmer is on his own here, uh, I'm going to let Bardet go for the points again. Uh, I think this is more of a, of a defense position at this point. Ah, uh, Johannes is going to get all the points. That, that's, that's not good for me. But I'll try and recover in the downhill portion. How many points is that for Johannes? He's on 100. I'm on 84. I'm, I'm quite far behind, though. Alexander has exploded. Alexander exploded in the, the climb of Barigazzo, and I've, I've never been able to come back on Bardet, Johannes, and Rubio. Uh, disappointing, disappointing, especially considering that Johannes is probably get another 10 points here, and I don't think I'm going to get any because the peloton is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My quest of the uh, Polka jersey has just taken a very dire turn. Thankfully for us, Johannes is not taking the stage. That's going to be a battle between the two leaders of uh, Citroën, but Ben O'Connor claims the stage ahead of Paris Pente. Bernal gets P3, meaning that Johannesson ends this quest with 108 points, he now has a 23 points lead over Alexandre Balmer with one more mountain stage to go. Flat stage today between Arezzo and uh, Lago Trasimeno. We've got some attacks here, uh, I didn't expect these guys to attack. Mark Hershey, Hausen, Price Peterson. So for once I'm seeing him on terrain that isn't a time troll, that's good. Paulus, Zandro Moresso, Schachmann, Asgreen, many riders. Um, there are, technically speaking, points today. That would be five, that would be nine points to take. So we'll send uh, Alexander in the breakaway, plus four today for him. 
We'll send him in the break. Try to get the nine points and close in on Mr. Uh, Johansson. Now, when I had my initial idea of the breakaway, um, well, there was two riders that went in that group. Johansson and Kelderman. Now, now they are, meaning that now, instead of closing in on Mr. Johansson, there's a strong chance that he's actually gonna get further away from me. From a strategic point, this race has been horrendous. But there's a, there's a very, very high possibility of the breakaway taking the stage. Meaning that either one of Balmer, Hershey, Camero, Asgrin can take the stage, uh, as Stefan Kung and Wehrmacher just crashed, I'm just gonna hope that they're back on the bike, yes they are. Uh, but it also means that Hugo could take the stage. Because Hugo is still alive and kicking, somehow. At his, at his old age. But he could take a Tour de France stage just like he did this year in 2022. Oh, it's a withdrawal from Marco Brenner. He was P8 this morning. That's just that's gonna bump Alexander Balmer from P35 to 34th. That... Now that's a dub. The uh, chances of a win are getting slimmer and slimmer because Kasper Asgren keeps on attacking. Because he's a dickhead. He's not even letting Mark Hershey take a single relay at this point. I feel like this is a conspiracy to see Tudor winning a stage. This is this this has Benjamin Azen all over it. Stop attacking Kaspar! Why? You're just losing the stage. You're the best printer out of everyone. You should not pace. You should not be the one guy here that should pace. If anything, that should have been me, because I've got two riders. Please allow Hugo to come back. That's 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 all I'm asking. Please allow Hugo to come back, come on. Alexander is dead. But Hugo is back. Thank you. Thank fuck for that. I'll follow Adrian because he's going to attack again. There we go. Dumbass. We'll use the gel. Also, I don't know why everyone in the peloton in my team is dead. I, I feel like I've missed an episode here. 3.9k to go. We are in the wheel of Kasper Asgren. Hershey is in my wheel. And Asgren has launched with 3k to go. Okay, I'm I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words. This AI is not the smartest. Uh, I'm worried that Hershey bullies me with his uh, increased acceleration. We'll go now. Ah, Asgren, Asgren has it. Asgren has it. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I tried. But Asgren, despite attacking three billion times, gets the stage ahead of Hugo de Marc Hershey. I really wanted to give Hugo a stage. I really wanted to give Hugo the stage. It's the final mountain stage, the final chance, if I want to get that, uh, that polka dot jersey. And I don't think I'll get it, if I'm being honest. Uh, if I'm being blatantly honest with you guys, I don't think I have what it takes. We need to get 16 points today on, uh, on Anders Haaland Johansson. And there's a very strong chance that uh, if I attack, he does as well. And there's an even stronger chance that he has a better day than my Alexandre today because Alexandre only has a plus one in mountain. His fitness peak is over. He's got 83 fitness. This is not the uh, prime of um, of Alexandre Balmer. And there is Johansson attacking indeed. I think, I think we are done. Sadly, I've tried to go for my first attack. Tade Pogacar was the one Donny blocking my move. Are you good? Why? What? Tade, Tade, why are you there? What is the point of you being in this breakaway? I... Why? Is it because we decided to break half the peloton? Could that be why? <sighs> Dumbasses. That was my chance to like surprise everyone. We'll go again. Kelderman follows, Buitrago follows, Yates Bardet, yup. Juan, no. Romain Segle, why? Okay, I'm, I'm, I must be stupid. There must be something I'm, I'm forgetting. Funny thing is, no one's able to be in the breakaway. I've, I've attacked three times already. And... I'm now... Thinking that I may just have to pace until the summit and try to disrupt everyone. Balmer is blowing block by Neil Seikoff here. Yeah, perfect, he's managed to, uh, to get out of it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Not a single clue. This is definitely not the way I saw uh, the, this stage going. But fuck it, 1k to go, there goes Hugo. There goes Alexandre Balmer. Come on, son. Hugo, take the wheel of Alexandre. Thank you. Just in case, place 99, if they stop the attack. Oh, they have it. Oh, god. Oh. Once again, did not see that going this way. But I'll take it. We're 8 points away from Anders. I usually don't cover the uh, KOMs, but I figured that this 
is an important stage. Alexon is going to try to be at the front of this group here. Matter of fact, Hugo is going to be the one leading Alexon towards a potential five points at the Valico di San Paolo. Five points that could be crucial if we were to take them. Hugo with a stellar job. Alexandre being led out to perfection. Don't get blocked. Oh, Romain Bardet. I swear to God. Romain, I thought we were friends. I thought we were mates because, like, we're both French. But, man, I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed in your actions there. Johannesen, 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 Johannesen is dropped. Johannesen is dropped. Uh, I, I, dis I, I let myself get dropped there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's quite dumb. Hugo, try to pace 99, see if you can catch up. Alexandre, try to see if you can come back on them duns. No? Okay, that's going to be two points. I think I'm still behind by like one point now, three points? Three points behind. Oh, fucking hell, this is going to be tight because the next climb is in 30 kilometers and the peloton is three minutes behind. All right, I have a new strategy. One minute with the peloton, three kilometers. If I pace, let's be honest, if I pace on this climb, and the, man the, the breakaway manages to stay afloat. And if I manage also to be in the front of the race, I guess, whether that's P1, P2, or P3, I'd take four points on both climbs, minimum, if the breakaway stays alive. I need three to overtake Anders Haaland Johansson. Meaning that I need to pace to ensure that I get P3 both times and to win by one singular point. I would be mental if that works. It worked for the first one. We got three points. No, we got two points, sorry. And the pellet. How is Zoran still here? Hello? How? What? No, just get dropped. And enjoy the rest of your life. Why are you there? The peloton stopped. Three minutes is the gap. I'm pretty much convinced. Oh, wait, no. Oh, kill the man. Wait, wait. Nah, wait, I need to do maps. Kalman has 108, I have 109. And Johannesen has 110. <laughs> Kelderman cannot be first. If Kelderman gets first placed, I'm done. Why is this so difficult? I've never been that much focused. Oh, they're coming back. They're coming back. 50 seconds. Bernal, Higuita, Ben O'Connor. I swear to God, you three. I'll, I'll use the gel. This is my, my finish line. My finish line is right here. One kilometer. Wilco's cracking. <laughs> Wilco's cracking. Yes. Alexandre Balmer does it. And we're going to celebrate at the summit. Have it. And oh my god. Jonas Vingegaard is out of the race. He was P2 this morning. Wow. I did not see that one coming. I did see that uh, Enric Mas had crashed, but wow, P2 of the GC and the only contender within 10 minutes, sorry, within 5 minutes of Tadej Pogacar is gone. Fucking hell, wow. And just as a symbol, Mr. Vingegaard is out and Tadej Pogacar is on his way to take the stage at Prati di Tivo. Following the 9 kilometers at an average win of 11%, Vingegaard finally DNF'd. It's been about 20 kilometers since he's been uh, on his own at the top of, um, of Valico in Coti. I feel like there was maybe some denial from Mr. Vingegaard, the fact that if he didn't actually DNF, well, he'd never finish the stage and therefore there would be an infinite loop. But it's not the case. That's not how cycling works. And Tadej has dropped Juan Ayuso. Carapace and Godu will fight for a uh, fourth place of the stage, but David Godu will end up in P3 of the general classification, which is absolutely mental for the French rider. Alexandre is there, he's alive, and that's that's what matters. We have an issue. Uh because <clears throat> Zoran is wearing green, yeah. He's not the actual green jersey. <laughs> that's 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 Tadej. Tadej got the points again. I I hate him. I don't, I, I really enjoy him as a rider, but it, it, when you play against him in PCM, the, it, he's probably like the most infuriating opponent you can have. The you mass can... sprint won't be for today, because today it's a breakaway day. Joël Le Suiter will lead Hugo Hull, and there's some good riders in the group. Jonas Federberg mostly, but we also have the likes of Harry Sweeney, Mark Hershey, and Owen Dole, but they are at the back of the group. The riders in the wheel of Hugo right now on the best ones, Rudy Mollar and, uh, and Nicola Conchi mainly. I'll just put Verenschold in the wheel of a sprinter if I can find one. 
Um, Philipson has no points. Case Ball has no points. What happened? Why has no one gone for sprints in this race? Fucking hell. Um, we'll do a, a very quick three man train here. Alright. 1.8k to go. There goes Joel Suter. Hugo in the wheel. For history. Allez, allez, mon Hugo. Allez, mon Hugo. Allez, allez. Hugo versus Rudy Volar. Ah, Rudy Volar clinches it. Fuck. Ah, it's another second place for Hugo. It's another P2 for Hugo. Heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking here. Yeah. I thought I had it. Final stage of the race. And there's uh, one thing I forgot. There are K1 points in this stage. Meaning that if I attack, or if I were to attack right now with Hugo, there's a very strong chance. Sorry, with Alexandre Balmer. There's a very strong chance that my uh, competitors would follow me. Which is why I'm actually gonna attack, because I just want to make sure. Verenchon with the plus five, perfect, so I can wrap up the, the tour with a potential win and the green jersey. That's absolutely all I need. All I need right now is not your love tonight, uh, but it's uh, it's a breakaway, so we'll attack again. Hopefully the peloton forgets to, to actually go for the sprint, I don't know, and we can win. They're gonna drag me down to the wire, aren't they? <laughs> That's two points for Johannesson. So I'm fucked. Uh, also, the, the peloton is really not letting me go because they're using Sam Bennett to chase me down for some odd reason. I, I don't really get why. Also, Johannesson and Kelderman have given up. And because Mr. Kelderman and Johannesson gave up, Alexandre Balmer is officially the Polkadot jersey of the first ever, and maybe the last, Hannibal Tour. <sighs> what the fuck? Why is this stage? Why? Why is this happening? Why is... No. Mm -mm. <clears throat> no. Why is... The main, or the majority of the peloton more than 8 minutes behind and they forgot to pace. Who Who is in this group? Oh, of course David Godieu was in there. Of course. The, the, of course. The ones... Oh, Bernard is also... Carapace is there. Yates is there. Wait, no. What the fuck? Why? Why? <laughs> I do not get this video game. I simply do not. And my breakaway attempt is going to end there. Um, because this group is going completely bonkers trying to chase me down, which makes sense to be fair. Um, some of the riders behind have actually decided to uh, to make a move. Right, they're, they're now... Oh, actually, no, they've, they've stopped again. They've stopped again. They had, they had attacked, but they've stopped again. Final five kilometers of this race. We are in Canae. I don't know if that's like a Latin name for Can. I, I genuinely wouldn't know. I'm gonna guess it isn't. But again, not sure. Verenchal is uh, looking good. Hugo is in the wheel of Zoran for vibes mostly. Um, actually, Zoran can take the wheel of, uh, of Joel. Thank you. The world champion leading out the green jersey, leading out the greatest rider to ever exist in Canada. Oh, he, he got left. He got left behind. Zoran takes the stage easily. In Cane ahead of Jakobsen and Arne Maret. Very weird end of, uh, of the Tour de France, I must say. Final podiums. It says Giro for some reason. Uh, it isn't. Maybe it's just because it's in Italy. Zoran Vrenschold takes the stage between San Nicandro Garna Garganico sorry, and Cane ahead of Jakobsen and Arne Maret. GC wise, Tadej wins it ahead of Ayutho. David Godu retains P3, knowing that every single rider in the top 10 finished more than 10 minutes behind. P10 is 44 minutes behind. Deep that, because that's ridiculous. But it's a win for Liquid Gas, I think, for one of their first season back in the cycling world. Alexandre Balmer uh, has fought from day 1 to day 21, but he wins the Polkadot jersey ahead of Jonasson and Kelderman for 5 and 6 points, respectively. The green jersey is easily won by Mr. Verenschold, uh, 60 points on Pogacar. Mahmoud and Hugo, actually P4, uh, had the breakaway won Hugo Wool. Potentially could have won the green jersey of the Tour de France. Best young rider is Juan Ayuso. Well done to him. One hour ahead of Ruben Thompson. Is there anyone in my team that I recognize? I don't think so. No, there isn't. And the best team, am I there? Shockingly, I'm not. No. Six stages is what we are bringing to the table. Alongside two distinctive jerseys, I had called that a successful Grand Tour. Um, it could have been better. I think the fact that losing that I lost McNulty the day before the race had to, to change my plans, uh, but I'm I'm very glad of how the team performed. Zoran, 
is finally a good sprinter, or at least no, finally I have a good sprinter in the team so I can try and get results. Um, Kung winning the time trials, Alexandre Balmer with a great stage at the Pic de Nord and the Polka d'Or jersey. Overall, I'm quite happy with uh, with this and knowing that this was one of the final big Grand Tours with uh, with this team because there's going to be a lot of changes coming into next season, both uh, visually and in the roster. But that, nevertheless, will be the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please do leave a like down below. If you want to see more of this content going forward, mainly the next episode, which will be the transfers, and we may do the Tour of Romania because I did add the race for a reason. So I think we'll do transfers, Tour of Romania, and possibly the European Championships. So if you want to see those, then do subscribe to the channel if you haven't so already. And I'll catch you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the phone.